Hello, welcome to uh, Comics Unmasked, our uh, second time recording, because there's a whole episode you guys will never see, because uh, I forgot to record audio for these two. We, Rocky mistake. We, we talked about such comic greats as the uh, new McDonald's McSpicy Sandwich. It's solid. <laughs> yeah, it's good. We talked about uh, Black Widow and Loki, with spoilers we'll never spoil for you, because... Uh, Sorry, I'm being a prick. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're recording now. Uh, so, uh, comics, comics. Yeah, Mark Miller's just announced a new comic book. Yeah, just Mark Miller. Yeah, no artist attached. Yeah, I'll draw just... it. <laughs> <laughs> I want some of that Mark Miller money. <laughs> Get that some of that Netflix cash. Yeah. I mean, I remember seeing on Instagram Chris Sprouse was like doing some sketches of of the cast of Jupiter's Legacy, I mean, and he said yeah. something in one of the comments as being like deciding to draw uh, the the Jupiter's what was what did you say it was called the circle Jupiter yeah. Circle that's it deciding to draw Jupiter Circle was the best decision of his whole career because it's basically just giving him fucking tons of money and has enabled him to set himself I, up. I, to I other don't. Products. I don't blame any artist for no. choosing yeah. to work on any of these product projects. I'm sure they pay well. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess Netflix might not be super keen on their decision to buy Miller World at the moment, judging from yeah. a, a Jupiter Circle kind of a... Well, that's the thing. Like, I think Didn't everyone that well really looks at Mark Miller no. as a moneymaker, but how often have his, pro- have his projects actually been moneymakers? A lot. Because, like, there's the there's the hit every once in a while. So you got Wanted, Kick-Ass. What else have you got? Kingsman. Kingsman's Kingsman, very yeah, successful. That's fair. Wanted Probably Kingsman there. is the most consistent of them, but, like, Kick-Ass 2 severely are, underperformed. Right? Are we talking about how successful adaptions are or how successful, how successful the books are? Not the books, the adaptations. So, Kingsman, very uh, successful. Hugely, yeah. Kick-Ass, very successful. And sequels mm. in generally underperform. So, yeah. If Kickass Two wasn't as successful as Kickass One, Kickass was still. I think Kickass Two performed just fine, yeah. given that they're doing a prequel that should have been out like a year and a half ago, but it's coming out sometime this year. They've got a TV show in the works uh, and more movies oh, planned. Yeah, wanted... uh, no Kingsman. Oh, Kingsman! Right. The Wanted did very well. Yeah, it did pretty good. Um, a little thing called the MCU did pretty decently. Mm, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In a lot of ways, that is his work. <laughs> okay, I, mean, I, I, retract, I retract my comments. There is a lot in <laughs> there is a lot in the MCU that was inspired by, at least visually. Uh, actually, you know what? We say it says it's hitches. Mm. Yeah, because I won't say much I mean, of the I MCU is inspired the by the writing of Ultimates. Yeah. I remember reading the Ultimates and Joss Whedon doing the introduction, being like, "This is the best Avengers comic," and you know, it's no surprise when when he finally does make the Avengers, it's very loosely based on the first Ultimates book. None of the characters in it act like the, the characters act in the first Ultimates book, though. Any, Thank God. I would say visually, any visually any inspiration the MCU does have is visual as opposed to mm. characterizations yeah. and dialogue base because I think by the time the MCU is kicking off um, the people behind it have a sense to not have Captain America shout do you think this A stands for France mm. or you know any of the I'd, other I'd, I'd, have, I'd have loved to see him do that and that's that one of the screen. that is one of the less egregious things about the Ultimates yeah, yeah. all the Ant-Man stuff was I think we've spoken horrific. about it before and how it is a, a perfect post 9-11 book yeah that yeah. is one of those examples like where i don't like it i think it's bad but i 100 percent understand why oh. and how it exists in the market when it did is jupiter's yeah. legacy the second netflix adaption they've done of one of his works have the magic order already happened no it's ordered no. Uh, yeah. they're, they're, they're working on it fair enough i think jupiter's legacy is the first one. as well Super Crooks, which is going to cross over with Jupiter's Legacy. Yeah. Of course it is. Which... Speaking of uh, films that aren't based on, on comics, though, and but are very good, 
and I just want to put a shout out to. I watched a Gunpowder Milkshake uh, oh. earlier. Was it good? Oh, female John Wick with Karen Gillan, right? Yeah, and Lena Headey, and Angela Bassett, and Michelle Yeoh, and uh... fucking great cast. It is. I, I I don't mean that in a in a bad way. I'm just when I watched the trailer, my thought was, oh, it's female John Wick. Its tongue is mm. firmly in its cheek more than John Wick is. Okay, because you had like female John Wick before with a uh, Tonic Blonde, I think it was called. Yes, which uh, is also excellent. And also oh, based on the comic. That. Yes, that is based uh, on an Ant- a Anthony rather Johnson. less John Wicky Anthony Johnson spy thriller. Yeah, um, pretty good film, but it, it leans way into the spy thriller territory as opposed to being just a John Wick action film. Yeah, yeah. This looks even much this more takes the like the notion of like the secret society. Oh, uh, could you like? That was my camera. Is that all right? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Um, I've noticed that even like you know how John Wick has been like, oh, there's a secret world of assassins underneath. Not oh, very secret, but yeah. Obviously, Gunpowder Gun Milkshake has the same. Like, there's a diner where they have to visit where they go for the medical stuff. Is a dentist's office. Mm. There's obviously the library itself with the. Yeah, that was in the trailer. Like, um, they had the book jokes in the trailer. It's its tongue is firmly in its in its cheek, mm-hmm. and it's great fun. You've got Karen, Karen Gillan's great in it. Everyone playing her her gay between, librarian mother and aunts is a uh, between this and the Jumanji films. Is is Karen Gillan becoming an action star? Yes, because it kind of feels like it. I'm okay well, no, with I mean, that. She's already had some experience of it with, Neb- with Nebula, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean yeah, Guardians I didn't even think about that. Well, yeah. Guardians yeah. and... Her predominant film career is action. Mm. Mm. She's good at it, so... And, you know, when, when do you ever not want to watch... Uh, like, Michelle Yao kick, uh, kick ass... Volume. She's very good at it. Yes, like what she based it. her whole career around. Yeah, yeah, and it's always <laughs> incredibly fun to watch. It is always entertaining. You basically just she gets a chain and you just see a go to town on guys like like. It, I could watch that for hours. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, she's also just a really good actress as well. Yeah, she is the best thing in any Discovery scene she's in. Yeah, cra- cra- she's great in Crazy Rich Asians. I really like that film. Like, Star Trek not, not her usual going to be role, a, that, really. Is it? No, a no. sad place without her. Mm. Yeah. No, no, she's very good. But yeah, the whole film is definitely worth a uh, a watch. Obviously, it's on Netflix in the US at the moment, so you may have oh, to... Oh, is it a Netflix uh, film? Uh, in the States, not here. Okay. So we, at the moment, you would have to... Uh, Surfshark, which we are not sponsored by, or another VPN, your way to watching it. <laughs> yeah. Very good VPN, that. Is it in cinemas? Mm, it's... I think it's meant to be. I, I think it's might have been scooped by Sky. Mm. I thought it was getting a cinema release. It's getting a 19th of September Sky cinema release, so I think Sky may have scooped it as a Sky original. Well, that'll uh... be on now TV then, won't it? It will, yeah. In yeah. glorious 720p. Simultaneous launch in cinemas and Sky cinema. Hey, you can Sky Boost up to 1080p now. You can pay an extra three pound a month to to boost to to 1080p. It's uh, and you know uh, you know they pay lock to uh, sharing screens behind that now as well, where it used to be just part of a normal package. Did they? Yeah. That said, they must have people dropping because you know uh, you do the song and dance to pretend you're quitting to get cheaper. Yeah. I just got an email the other day off him saying, like, do you just want it to carry on at the offer price for six months? You didn't even have to pretend to quit? No, they were just like, we're going to keep it at the price it's at for the next six months for you. It's like, okay. That's fine Here with we me. Go. Yeah. I had that with uh, Mubi last year. I went to quit Mubi because of the price hike and eventually they just, like, rather than letting me go, was like, we'll give it another year for you at £59 a year or whatever. So I was like, yeah. I need to get a, I need to get a trial for, pardon me, for movie to watch First Cow. Yes, I, I need to watch. I haven't really watched movie at all the past few months. I, I cancelled my movie not long ago because I was just not watching movies at all. 
this year. I watched a lot last year, though. I need to watch the second Fair Street as well. I need to finish watching the first one. I very much enjoyed it. I well, also need to finish watching Hornblower. <laughs> I, I, I nearly watched Romeo and Juliet the other night. Oh, God, what happened? Well, it was trending on Twitter. <laughs> and then I thought, one. ooh, I haven't seen that in a long time. I love it. Which one? Baz Luhrmann. Oh, right, yeah. I've, I've literally not seen it since I was in school. And it holds up, I think. At, at a time where I didn't care for Shakespeare mm. because I was being forced to watch it. Yeah. Best, um, uh, best Mercutio ever. Mm. Bold claim. I, I just love Mercutio in Lemons, Romeo and Juliet. Mm. But uh, I, I'm, I'm intrigued to see how The, the, the holds Venom up. in the Plague on Both Your Houses scene. It's just... Mm. I've, uh, I've, I've come it's around on Shakespeare. I remember the most from the film, probably. Hope you're in. Uh, you're enjoying this episode of Movies on Mass, guys. Yeah, yeah. The problem is we, we we ran out of comic conversation with the unrecorded episode. You know we we had probably a good forty minutes of like solid it was all comics wrong, conversation, well, wasn't it? It was intensely focused on comics. It, it, there was. Like, I we, don't know. We, we spent a lot of time for... talking about the Black Widow movie and Loki. That's comics related, though. Yeah, comics yeah. adjacent. They're comics properties. Mm. And then we went into actual comics From discussion. <laughs> like the entire time was a chain of comics, barring the McSpicy. You know, this would be coming after our uh, our one-on-one episode, kind of, where we barely talk about comics as well. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we tried, guys. We really tried. Yeah. We still got to call it Comics Unmasked, but, uh, hey, one of us makes comics... And it is an unmasked view into tra- into people's train the thoughts. The title mm. still stands. Yeah, it's always relevant. I can talk about the Comic Con and the leads. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, do that. I wanted it to go, but I was, I was working that day. I couldn't get out of it. It was fun. Um, uh, I went in expecting uh, not to have a good day because um, I had done another event by the same organisers and. The, it was just uh, they're called unleashed unleashed events yeah um so i did the york winter comic con in 2019 um and it just a lot of things went wrong with it my table was very far away from the main crowd uh they spelt my name wrong on all the advertising um things like this and i was just it left me not very impressed and then i think because i was so far away from the main crowd i didn't even break even that day between travel and, and the cost of the table. I think I made like 20 quid. Um, but this event was really well organized and really well run. Um, it was in the town I think hall. The, yeah, it was in, um, yeah. no, it was in one of the, it was in the armories, Royal Armories. Oh, they've, they've nabbed the armory spot. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, and that's where Thought Bubble used to be. Uh, okay. Cause I think because Thought Bubble has moved to Harrogate, the town council is, is kind of trying to push, the yeah, Unleashed so a new Comic Con. We had Thought Bubble for about four or five years in the armories, and then yeah. it's moved to the town centre for right. about two years. And it did like part in the town hall, it had some pop up tents around that area. Mm. And now it's moved to Harrogate. Yeah. So um, interesting to see someone else taking the armory spot. Yeah. But um, it was a fantastic day. I, I was the only comic book creator there which was unfortunate, but it did mean that I cleaned up in sketches. Um, and I was sat nearby to Pete Davison, which was pretty cool. Um, and uh, what's his face? The old guy from... He was one of the advisors in Game of Thrones, but he was also in Star Wars and Indiana Jones. Can't remember his name. Is I... Yeah, to the crown. He's like the old monk guy who was sleeping with very young ladies at one point. I think, Let's know about. I think someone catches him and he is like all flustered. I can't remember. You know about pa- pa- uh, Picel? Possibly. <laughs> Let me look at the picture. Uh, let me see. Let's see what I can find. Yeah, that's who I was. Yeah, he's in. Uh... He's on about like Julian Glover. That's who he's on about. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. She just said Veers. Yeah, Commander Veers or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it was Julian Glover. So that's pretty cool. General Veers. Um, 
General Viz and uh, Alex, my partner, came dressed as Scarlet Witch and got lots of people coming up for photographs. Um, there was loads of really great cosplay. It was just nice to be back in that sort of environment and um, having people having fun um, and everything. The only thing that was a little bit nerve-wracking was a lack of social distancing. Um, but I was behind the table, so I, f I felt safe myself. It was just the crowds right. were a little bit thick. Mm -hmm. And they did stagger people going into the hall as well. So, um, did they so have was... just the one one room? Yeah, just the one room, yeah. It was a big room, but it was, it was just yeah, the one Yeah, room. Cause yeah, because dep it depend on what events are on. Yeah. They they use the, the main room opposite and then the one on the, the left, yeah. kind of, so to speak. Yeah. Um, interesting. And I also stopped off at OK Comics the day before. Ah, yes, um, my, my shop. I love it. Yeah, and J said hello to Jared at OK Comics and had a conversation with him and um, got myself some comics, which was really nice because I hadn't got a comic from a comic shop in about a year and a half now. Um, and uh, I said, if it, was he going to be uh, having a, a table at... at the Comic Con, he was like, I only found out about this thing two weeks ago. Like, they've been really late in actually getting in contact with people. So, um, yeah, I think it's one of these things that's probably in a few years' time going to grow into a bigger event. I'll probably go next year then. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't really know about it until you mm. mentioned that you were, you know, attending. Yeah. And, you know, I, I live here. I, I, I'm local. Uh, I, I, as as people may have guessed, I pay attention to comic book related things. Um, you'd think I'd have known about it, but I had no idea. Mm. I uh, speaking of a uh, of local uh, comic shops, I got to uh, pop back into a uh, Traveling Man for the first time in a mm. in a long time. <laughs> the other week, which was a. Uh, Pleasant. I didn't buy any comics. I bought, bought a, a card game. Terrible person. Uh, no, I read most of my comics digitally, so if I was just like, and nothing in the kind of, in, I occasionally pick up independent stuff from there, but nothing grabbed my attention. So yeah, yeah that, that trip, it was just a, uh, a copy of Munchkin Critical Role. But I was still supporting the local comic shop. Even if I wasn't buying a comic at the time. No, no. It's, I'm it, back, it's... by the way. <laughs> I've been absent for last minute. Yeah, we saw you freeze. Yeah, yeah. just saying I've been a, a popped in travelling man for the first time mm. in a while. In Manchester or? Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice shot. The, the board game section and the gaming section is getting larger and larger in there. Yeah. The, the, the Leeds one is as well. Yeah. Um, I imagine it's making them more money. Pardon? The... They're advertising for a new job in Travelling Man. Yeah, I, I was looking at it, I was like, I don't live in Manchester, but the train's not that long. Yeah. I don't think yeah. they pay enough to justify the travel, though. The, um, mm. the Leeds store kind of expanded last year. Yeah. Where, because there, there was, where the Leeds store is, there's um, a store next to it that, it was one of those places that just revolved through a different business every six yeah. months. And, um, Whatever happened, Traveling Man finally just went screw it and they bought out the other building, knocked through the wall and kind of doubled up their space. Uh, which means they can have all their board games and stuff yeah. upstairs now. Because it used to all be downstairs in the basement, which meant I assume they didn't sell as well as they could because you, you had to actively go out of your way to go downstairs yeah. to the basement. And it, you know, a bit dingy. I think Andrew's frozen again. Yeah, it was it was very cramped down there as well. But now it's all up. It, it's the first thing that you that you go into when you yeah. walk in the store. Um, I will open say, area. like, uh... I actually can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> so, some about Traveller Man, board games, expanding, sales. It was, yeah, I imagine, like, the board game sections do really well for them. Like, as a hybrid store now. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I saying, like, if you are looking to uh, Traveling Man's on, as an online store, and if you're looking to spend money that some of it isn't Amazon, they if you make, if you get your order in before 2 o'clock, they get it to you next day. 
and for a small company that is impressive it is it is it's not easy to do that no we use dpd to deliver hello hello you're back back he seems to be yeah. back i think for now i was just saying that uh traveling man if you order for online with him before like two o'clock they get the order to you next day yeah. oh, really? I, i've just clicked on their site now and the first like three things four things are all warhammer oh yeah you i will say they have comics on there realistically it's a place to go to buy the website is a place to go to buy various hobby stuff more than it potentially yeah. is comics. Mm. i do have to say okay comics is one of the best comic shops i've ever been to i do want to visit it sometime they, they are i don't know if you know this they are an, an eisner nominated comic store oh nice for the for how small the space is, and it is quite a small shop. It is, yes. They have very little floor space. The sheer amount of stuff that they've managed to cram in there, and how well curated and selected everything is. Did you go upstairs. Yeah, like yeah, me yeah. being all into European comics and everything. That whole section upstairs, I was mm-hmm. like, I'm in heaven right now. They've got loads of they, stuff. They but know, like, like they know the market in the sense of, if you want to buy DC Marvel comics and image comics as well frankly dark horse you know american large publishers you can get them on amazon easily enough if you really want to mm. you've got traveling man and you've got Finn planet both less than five minutes walk away both mm. significantly larger stores but neither of them sell some of the stuff that okay comics is very smart utilization of its space in terms of yeah. what can we sell that no one else will have it's a, it's mm. a shop i really want to go into uh, I've bought some stuff from online, and then you know they get stuff to you pretty quickly as well. To be fair, mm. so yeah, it's like yeah, it's shop like at, standard first class sort yeah, of forty eight hour track. Places over Amazon, guys, if you can. Mm. Yeah, um, I I always try and order my comics from either OK Comics or Close Encounters now. Yeah, I, I obviously I have a OK Comics being my favorite standing order. I've all my singles that I, yeah. that I get from there. So. I buy a lot of trades, admittedly, from Amazon, just because I spend so much money in OK Comics every week anyway. Yeah. That I'm like, OK. I do have to save some money at places. Yes. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the odd trade here or there, I'll still just... You know, I'll pick... Oh, I just saw... Uh, I, you know, sorry, I'm just scrolling through the Traveling Man website. As They've got a uh, The Savage Shores exclusive cover. And it's nice. like it's... some exclusive covers there, yeah. I had an exclusive cover. I've got an exclusive cover from Close Encounters, actually, for that. Yeah, OK Comics don't tend to do a lot of uh, exclusive covers, but they do a lot of book plates and signs yeah. things. That, uh, Anything that, that Philip Brubaker do has got a book plate at I OK think, Comics. I, I think Jared knows uh, Phillips from... Like, they went to like college together, I think. Yeah, I think so Jacob Phillips lives college. in Manchester as well. Yeah. Um, Which, believe it or not, seeing him living in Manchester was one of the main reasons I moved to Manchester. <laughs> Hmm. Also, store, okay, comics did like, get oh, an ex- uh, they did get an exclusive uh, dust jacket cover for the new Tilly Walden collection. Who who is sorry? Okay, comics they got an exclusive. Mm, very nice jacket. Because uh, I think that there's one store you know they got the UK exclusive and there's one store that's got the US exclusive. Yeah, but um, I've got collection that at Close Encounters. Hmm. I've only read on the Sunbeam, but I I loved it and I love Tilly Walden's art style, so it's I definitely someone I want to read more of. On Sunbeam, I've got it. Yeah, I, I I read it and fell in love with it. I was like, this is phenomenal, and yeah. immediately uh, pre-ordered the uh, the collection. I think it's called Alone in Space. Mm-hmm. It's just a collection of like three of the other published works she's done, and then like yeah. a bunch of short unpublished stuff. I was quite depressed when I found out that she's two years younger than me. Yeah, yeah, it always sucks. I think doesn't I'm, it? I'm the youngest of the three of us as well, aren't I? I think so. Yeah, yeah. twenty six. Oh well, I mean, I'm twenty seven, like in this week. So uh, okay, not I by am, much. Uh, yeah, I am ancient and crumbling. You are. You're, you're going to die long before us. I'm I'm kid Loki. You're 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 a classic Loki, and <laughs> Connor is um. <laughs> Am I Who's Hiddleston bubble? in this? I think Connor's I'm, Hiddleston. I'm, I'm the this, default. Yeah. Connor's yeah, the alligator yeah. Loki. <laughs> yeah, Ali Loki. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fair. I would like to say that I won't die long before you, but I am eternal. 
I, I thought mean, if it was you say more so. like, I'm taking you with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that's what he was going with. I thought he was going to like call out my shitty diet or something. I mean, uh, <laughs> hey, it's fair, taking you with me. Neither of you ever ever heard my uh, my funeral plans that I used to have as a as a teenager. How aggressive were they? We built the city on rock and roll, blasted on no on uh, speakers, like pneumatics put in the coffin. Mm. Uh, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. We'll play. And then upon the chorus, my intent was for my body to like come out of a coffin, clap its hands, and go back in. Figured any elderly relatives or friends there, I've got a good chance of taking them with me. Or a few heart attacks. That's hilarious. In in other news, completely non-comic related, but of interest to the channel. Valve has just announced a handheld Steam console. Oh. The Steam Deck. It looks like a Game Gear. It does not look comfy to play. (laughs) Oh. Oh. (laughs) Oh. Instant disgust. Apparently it plays Jedi Fallen Order. Why are those thumbsticks all the way up there? Yeah. That's what she said. Like, are those pads underneath it? And Google... The Steam Deck, if you want to see what we're referring to, guys. Are those pads underneath it? Their attempt at those weird Steam track pads that are on so. the controller. But yeah, apparently you can play Jedi Fallen Order at high with little to no issue. I don't believe that. I do. How expensive is this? Uh, $400 with 64 gig of storage. $530 with 256 gig of storage. Oh, it's... oh. I just clicked on the website, the official Steam page for it, and I quote, there's a dock too. Yep. So it, it is a Switch. It is the Game Gear for, to the Switch is Game Boy. Yes, technically significantly better, but no one will buy it. <laughs> like, No. Full-size thumbsticks positioned perfectly within your reach. I, I don't know about that, Valve. No. The thing is, looking I, at I see it as where well, they are. like, I just get my Razer Kishi and clamp it around my phone and play Steam games that way. Stream them from a PC. Yeah. Hmm. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, a little bit of a bears at the E3 picnic there for you, apart from it's not E3. Yeah, E3 is all summer long. Yeah. Mm. Bears have a summer of gaming picnic. <laughs> oh, Keely loves you. Yeah. No, definitely not comics, although you could probably read comics on it. You can read comics on your Switch. You can? They have some apps for it. I just not kinda... sure I'd advise it, but... Mm. I just kind of don't see the point of it. <laughs> thing is it can't play the best switch games so who cares yeah and that's just a fact i just feel like anyone who's be who'd be tempted by it already has a pc mm-hmm. or a switch or a switch yeah anyhow that's enough uh video game talk Yeah, so we're, what, uh, we're here to talk about comics. What comic news shall we leave this episode on, guys? Other than, uh, again, apologies for my uh, terrible consistency at checking audio. That, that DC will not stop publishing comics, despite the internet's claims that DC are going to stop publishing comics every year. Yeah. Oh my god, they are publishing so many goddamn comics. Yes, they are. <laughs> they have announced, You've got to read I think, them all. I think they've announced something like eight comics for October. This that interesting last this? week. Another DC. one in the there's another one in the DC Howard imprint. There's Yeah, so in the last like two weeks we've had Human Target, uh by Tom King and Greg Smallwood. Yep. Oh, we've great. had a Catwoman book by Cliff Chang. Which yep. yes please. There's a uh Suicide Squad Zombies book and a DC versus Vampires book. Suicide Squad Zombies is an actual ongoing title. It is basically the new Red Hood book. Sure, why not? I mean, fair. Uh, Ro- Rosenberg playing right in the Red Hood, leading, leading a gang of supervillain zombies, does 
feel yeah. vaguely entertaining. Like it does, it does. Um, you've got a, a crossover comic with the last podcast on the left. It's a, That's a horror the new podcast. DC Hammer title. Yeah. Uh, you've got two new Wonder Woman books. You have got Nubia and you've got uh, Historia, which. Yep. Technically, mm. Historia was announced like three years ago, but is um, just... but is now coming out in October. Yeah, that's like seven books right there. That's off the top of my head without even checking. There's pro- there could uh, be more. Than that. There is the book everyone wanted, the new super realistic Batman book. Oh, great artist! It's got Sorrentino. Andrew, it's got uh, Sorrentino, yeah. yeah, Sorrentino on it. Yeah. But I just I don't need more like what if Batman was real. I don't, life. but it's Sorrentino art, so I'm going to read it. Yeah, it does look very pretty. <laughs> I've seen of it. Pardon? I have two announcements. Yep. Not big ones. One is I'm halfway finished inking Chimpanzee with a razor blade, nice. so it's progressing very nicely. And the other is I've just agreed to draw an epic fantasy graphic novel. Oh. Oh cool. well, me and James are big yeah. fans of epic fantasy. So we're, we're, well, you let me rephrase got... it: sword and sorcery fantasy. We're Even fans more. Of that as well, yeah. Yeah. Basically, if a word fantasy is in there, Italian. me and Connor are most likely to buy it. Yeah. yeah. And it's um, in a sort of Italian Renaissance era circus, a uh, traveling circus with the, where the main character lives in the circus. And they're traveling through an environment based on the Russian steppes. Nice. We were already going to buy it. Yeah. You, you can yeah. stop selling I mean, it to us. Yeah. Me, me, me and Connor are, the, are like the two people who are like. Where's all the Amethyst books, DC? Yeah. Did you read that last one, the Amy Reed? I'll one? be honest, I haven't actually, so I can't. <laughs> it's fine. You know, it's 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 not the be- it's not the best Amethyst book, but it's fine. It's it's very much an all ages fa- uh, fantasy though. Oh, you see, that like there is many Amethyst books. <laughs> yeah. Uh. But I mean, me and James are two of the people most excited mm. for Scales and Scoundrels. Yeah. Yeah. That looks does look good. But yeah, this, this comic I basically is just me having watched Doctor Javago and being like, I want to draw those environments. No, oh, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Mm, yeah. Uh, so uh, it's it's kind of a bit um going to be a bit. Do you know the Mignola Far Farford? How do you pronounce it? Farford and the Grey Mouse uh, comics that he did with Howard Chaikin. Don't yeah. know. Yes. Four issue kind of four prestige format, forty eight issue yeah. comic that they did in the nineties, just before um, Hellboy, and they're based on some classic sword and sorcery stories. But they're some of my favourite stuff that Manuel has done, and probably my favourite fantasy comic I've I've read. Um, and uh, those will be a big influence on 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 these, but on this book. I uh, I not really an announcement that anyone cares about, but uh, I started a third D and D campaign. Yeah, yeah. I need to play D and I don't. <laughs> and on that note, we shall uh, see you next week. And now you will always be the legend of the uh, unseen. The, the one episode where we yes. stayed on topic. Yeah, we, we have something. We in com- yeah, we have something in common with Doctor Who now. Lost episodes. <laughs> yeah. See you guys.